The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. A leper came to Jesus and pleaded on his knees. If you want to, he said, you can cure me. Feeling sorry for him, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Of course I want to, he said, be cured. And the leprosy left him at once, and he was cured. Jesus immediately sent him away and sternly ordered him, Mind you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and make the offering for your healing prescribed by Moses as evidence of your recovery. The man went away, but then started talking about it freely and telling the story everywhere so that Jesus could no longer go openly into any town, but had to stay outside in places where nobody lived. Even so, people from all around would come to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Very good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, how many of us here has ever met a leper? If you have, you can raise your hand. Okay, some, a few. Oh, okay, a few. Huh? And probably because you went to Sungai Bulo, I think, to the lepers camp, no, or somewhere else. Okay, good. So, these days it's very hard actually to encounter lepers because the disease which we associate with leprosy, by and large already, it hardly occurs like, these days because of hygiene and everything people practice. So it's almost like disappearing. Anyway, this story of leprosy, you know, if we have never met a leper, so maybe we might not actually know what it is. And it just refers to some kind of a skin disease in the Bible when they talk about leprosy. It refers to all kinds of skin diseases. And generally the skin diseases, people were very afraid of them because they could be infectious. And that's why in the first reading, you see how, you know, they, the Lord commands, you know, that they should even have their hair disheveled, they should tear their clothes, so that from far you can see, oh no, it's a leper, stay away. Children, don't go near, it's a leper, you know, so that you won't get the disease, right? So it was more to protect the community. And sadly, of course, these lepers, they had to stay away from everybody else. They couldn't be part of the community anymore. So the lepers, they were really pitiful because they were suffering already physically. Yeah, they're suffering from an illness, a disease. And at the same time also, they now have a stigma where people also are afraid of them. And after a while, it's, they, they become outcasts. Yeah, they are really ostracized almost from the community and they are cut off from everyone. So it's a very sad situation to be in. Physically, you're suffering, but then also socially now, you are now cut off from everyone. Now, at the beginning of Mass, did we see what was the theme for today's Mass? Right? It says, Jesus, friend of outcasts. So that theme comes from a reflection on today's gospel. The lepers, they were all outcasts. And they were outcasts because of a disease that they had. Now, these days, we still have outcasts. But these outcasts, not maybe because of a disease or sickness that they have, but for all other kinds of reasons. Yeah? So there are many people suffering in this way, social stigma and they are cut off from the community, rejected by their families. So these are also outcasts, the lepers in inverted commas, that still have, uh, you know, that still are, even in our midst. And this story of Jesus and how he treats the leper is a reminder to us that we should befriend the outcasts. We should have compassion for them. We should feel sorry for them. And that's exactly what the gospel says, whereby Jesus, he feels sorry. He feels sorry for this person who came to him pleading on his knees, asking 
to be cured. Now, when we see a beggar at the roadside, what do we feel? Here is also someone not in a very good social situation. Do we feel repulsion in our hearts? Do we say, okay, I think I will walk by the other road to avoid that beggar? And especially if it's an unwashed, dirty person with clothes all torn and everything, how is our heart at that moment? If we feel repulsion, well, it might be a very natural uh, response. But if we reflect further, and if we are spiritual persons, maybe other than the repulsion or even the fear that we may have, there might also be compassion. You feel sorry for the person. Now, if you don't have that sense of you know, sympathy for that person, you have to ask yourself, how come uh, my heart is like that? And sometimes it's okay. You can feel repulsed, you can feel frightened, and also feel sorry for the person at the same time. Mm, okay, so there could be many reasons why when we see a beggar, especially an unwashed one, someone who looks very unclean, why we feel that way and why we don't feel sorry even for the person. It could be in the past, somebody, uh, someone who was like that attacked you, so you are fearful. It could be, you know, it was a scam. You helped this person only to realize actually it's part of a syndicate. So many reasons why sometimes we harden our hearts. But sometimes just because of the natural repulsion, we don't like things that are dirty, that are unclean, and things that could cause trouble to us. But if that is the case, we have to ask ourselves, is my heart really like the heart of Jesus? Now, in the history of the church, we have many saints, many saints in the church, right? Now, one very famous saint is St. Francis of Assisi. Have you all heard of St. Francis of Assisi? Yeah, so he was the son of a very rich man. He comes from a rich family and he goes through a conversion. And part of his conversion process was overcoming his disgust and revulsion for lepers. So there were many lepers in his time. So one day he was on his horse, he was riding, and he saw a leper. And he felt, you know, all that, that disgust and repulsion and everything. But God prompted him to go one step beyond this. And so he descended from his horse and he embraced the leper, he kissed the leper and gave the leper some alms, a donation to help him. So that was a conversion that St. Francis went through. And after that, he went to the leper's hospital, he went to meet all the lepers, he had overcome his fear and he embraced everyone, he kissed them and he help them. So that is one saint we, we remember fondly, a great saint who had the heart of Jesus and he overcame that. Okay? Think of Mother Teresa picking up the dying, yeah, the impoverished people who were abandoned by the streets and all that, literally dying in the drains. She picked them up and she put them into you know, little shelters, homes, so that they could die with dignity, not just there on the street side. That also required great courage. And not only great courage, great love. And today, we also revere her as a saint. So these are the people who have given us an example. Yeah? And it's always a reminder to us to care for the less fortunate to care for people who are different from us and to also overcome our fear of things that are unclean and different and perhaps even perilous. Taking, of course, always the necessary safeguards for our own health and for our own protection. Yeah? When we want to do charity, when we want to reach out to the suffering, the sick, we must also take care of ourselves because that is also our duty. But not allow our hearts to become hardened and to have no care and concern for such people. Now that lack of care and concern, that is what we call indifference. 
Yeah, so many of us could have this, maybe not. Hopefully all our people here have a big golden heart and you're not indifferent. Yeah, and you really care and you wish you could help even, to, but maybe do not know how to help. And you do feel that sympathy and sorrow and maybe lacking some courage or the means or the availability to assist such people. But never in our minds should we condemn them and should we treat them badly. So if any of you has ever treated a beggar badly, scolded the bugger nicely, kicked the fella, something like that, with harshness, I think you might need to go for confession. Okay? Because remember, that person is a human being. And every human being deserves to be loved and to be treated with respect. However they may dress, however they may behave, whoever they may be, every human being deserves to be respected. Okay, first half of the homily finished, second half. Okay, like maybe two-thirds finished. Now, we just bring the reflection one step further. There are very many reasons also why we reject people, we turn them into outcasts. And it might be because of something that we call sin. Now, this is something that has entered into some of our church communities all over the world, a kind of like a aversion to sinners. We start to feel that the sinners should be outside the church. If we let them in, they are going to infect us with their sin. <laughs> if we let them in, they are going to mislead all our children. If we let them in, this place is not holy anymore. So keep them out. If they are trying to enter, tell them, go and see Father, that side at the corner there, go for confession first. <laughs> then only come in. So this is another way we also have outcasts. And it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. Because the church is actually the house of the sinners. The church is actually the place of Jesus. And we know that Jesus is the friend of the sinner. He's the friend of everyone who wants to be considered, or they don't want to be, but we want them to be considered an outcast. We are casting them out. But no, for that very reason, in some way, they have even more right to be sitting in this church than the so-called clean and holy. Now, when we become a church that is keeping the sinner out, what does that, have, what does that do? It turns those who are in the church, who think they are worthy to be there, it turns them into hypocrites and that's why sometimes the world is very harsh they will say oh you church going christians you're all hypocrites we know you are also sinners just that nobody found out yet <laughs> but there you are making a difference between yourself and these other public sinners sinners known to the community or known to the world and we start saying out That's how we are making new lepers. And the leprosy they are having is sin. This is not right. Now, it can happen also in our families. Okay? Whereby we may have a son or a daughter who is not really following the tradition of our family. Who is not really doing what we want as the parents. Maybe even getting involved with a girl or a boy of another faith, even going to convert to that religion, whatever religion it is. And then we feel, oh, we got to do something about it. We are going to scold him properly, scold her nicely, threaten her, get out of the house, we are going to disown you. If you do this, you are going to be like a leper to us. Out. People do this. And in this particular example, uh, it's because of religion. Could be because of a lot of other things, whereby the family is not happy. So not just the church. Uh. 
but even in our families, we could also bring the same attitude. Forgetting that that child that I'm going to disown now, if you are the mother, it came out of your womb. And Bible says, can a mother reject its child, the fruit of his womb? No. Anyhow, what should we do in such a situation? It's okay to say we are not happy with what they are doing. It's okay to honestly tell them. But it's not okay to threaten and to force them to do what we want and to excommunicate them from the family. To close the doors. Tell them even reunion, you don't come. You are not welcome anymore. Who asked you to do such a thing? You brought shame to our family. This is not the way of a Christian. So now, if again we have such situations, let us do something about it. Go and find the so-called black sheep. You know, we like to say, oh, this person is the black sheep of the family. Go and find the lost sons and daughters. It is your duty also as a parent to walk with them even when they have gone astray. And that is a real challenge. But remember, all things are possible for God. If you are a godly person, you can do it by the grace of God. So my dear brothers and sisters, today as we reflect upon the greatness of the love of God, and especially the love of Jesus, He is truly a friend to the outcasts. And He invites us to welcome back those whom we have made into outcasts, to call them back and say, though you are different, though you do not do that which we want, you are still a member of our family. You are still a member of our community. You are still respected because you are a child of God. That is really the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's difficult. One final thought for us. You know, we like to say, hate the sin, love the sinner. Right? I think this is like a kind of a saying, very easy we remember. It's in a way to tell us, we must distinguish between the sin that is wrong, that we do not want to accept, and the sinner, the person, right? But let us go one step further. When we look at a human being, when we look at a person, whoever that person is, why do we have to descend into category of saint or sinner? Why do we have to descend into those categorizations? So I tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, hate the sin and love the human being. No need to think of whether he's a sinner, whether he's a saint, whether he's a what, whether he's that. The dignity of every human being, that is why we love, no matter who and what they have done. And that is, in fact, a very great challenge. To come out of these shackles of categorizing people into saint and sinner, worthy and unworthy, can and cannot, allowed and not allowed. To come out of this black and white thinking. And to remember that we are all children of God.